everyone. Welcome to the Hammer Way Show. I am your host, Cynthia W. Hammer. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. We are on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, LA Talk Radio, Mix Station Baltimore, YouTube, and Facebook. We have a wonderful guest today, uh, Mr. Kibway Trim. He is also a friend. First and foremost, he is a wonderful husband, father, and entrepreneur. So he'll be joining me shortly. Um, I like to focus, especially in this day and age, on our African men. Are the black man, um, the the leader of the household, the the true kings of the universe, and so I always um, try to heavily have my show guested with the voice of the black male. I think those leaders are the reason why we are still here. I grew up in a household with a father who is, thank God, living. My dad is eighty three. And it was his guidance and his strength that made us who we are today. He raised six kids alongside of my mom. And um, just a pillar of advice. I don't know if that pillar and advice go well together, but he was a pillar to me and he gave me a lot of sound advice. And that'll resonate a lifetime. And I'm so grateful because everything that needed to ha- that has need- that has needed to be said has been said between us between a father and daughter and I love my dad so much and I'm so grateful so I just honor the black male and I'm glad that they're here and they are they will be protected and they will be honored as long as I have breath in me so I usually start with praying, so let me get in there. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Allow me to be a vessel, work through me. Thank you for allowing me to do the hammer away show. And just keep us safe, Lord. There's so much going on in the world. Just keep us safe, keep us vigilant. In Jesus' name, Uh, Amen. Amen. So I am on a 2022 book tour for my fourth novel, Who Is At The Door. Everyone knows I love to talk about my books, honey. I carry my books in my purse, in my car, like I carry my lipstick in my purse. I always have my book with me. So this is Who Is At The Door. There's a bit of a glare Uh, how's that come on who was at the door who was at the door there's me on the back that's a good picture I like that thank you Jesus I'm an indie author so anybody that wants to know about publishing a book you must have a professional editor but who was at the door is the sequel to my novel a good case about the two caregivers working in Beverly Hills Um, please pick up a copy they are available on Author House, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all online book retailers. And and they're available in your bookstore. And if you don't see my novels by Cynthia W. Hammer on the shelf, just ask the assistant to, uh, you know, look into uh, their programming and see if it's somewhere in the bookstore, if not to order you a copy. Because this is a murder mystery. People loved a good case so much that they asked for more. And I was in the process of writing as a good case started trending during the pandemic. And I know people hate when I say that. So I'll, well, I don't care what they say. It's my show. Um, During that time, I was writing uh, The Mystery Adventure. And I, I always could shut myself in and write. So I really don't need an excuse. I can just shut everything down and, and, and put my head uh, to the typewriter and and just go for it. So this novel is a continuation of my main character, Sheila Price, who is a uh, African woman, uh, a caregiver, leaves Beverly Hills and heads to California to work for 
a um, a woman who is not all there uh, uh, psychological, psychologically all there. And so I weave a powerful, again, a powerful tale. Percentage, a large percentage of the book is actually true. So with that said, <clears throat> excuse me, I weave a powerful tale of, of Sheila Price uh, going to New York from California, like I said, and she takes on this case. And it is, it is good. I have to admit, I love a good murder mystery. I love a good, I love a good page turner, a detective. I, I always have liked, you know, as they can say, the great American writers, there's so many uh, African people who are great writers. Um, I'm not sure what category, if they want to say they're American writers, if they're African writers. There are so many um, that we don't know about that I'm just discovering, and I'll have to do a show on my greatest reads. Um, but I do know that I, I do read James Patterson. I've read all of Patterson. Um, I have not, no, nothing good or bad. John Grisham. So I, I've always liked a mystery. I guess since I was about 10 years old, I always escaped in a book. And as I was able to afford my own choice of writing, I just read what was in to kind of keep up with the times and to have great conversations when you're out. So I just read a lot and I did read a lot of Ludlam, but I also like Toni Morrison, but there's so many other uh, black women and black men to choose from that I don't want to just name the people that everyone else knows. Uh, I, I love a good book, but I, my favorite is a good mystery. That's why I'm grateful to be able to be an actress uh, on Lifetime Movie Network, as well as, well, Lifetime Movie, well, Lifetime Movie Mysteries, but it's LMN. Because I love Lifetime. I loved Lifetime before Lifetime was a thing, you know, just it was clean. And then it started getting into the mysteries and then it's very romantic. And then they have the thrillers and now they do horror. Uh, I just love a good, uh, any anything new that I have not seen before, even if it's the kind of the same type of ending where, you know, you get rescued, the mystery gets solved. I just like the whole process and I like the cinematography of it all. I like watching uh, how people put their pieces together. I, I always look past the storyline and watch the movie. So with that said, um, we are looking for Kip Way to join us. I hope everyone's having a great day. Again, I'm on book tour. I will be at Tall Tale Books in Atlanta, August, I have to think about it, August 13th. So for those who want or in the uh, surrounding area of Atlanta, please come out and support my um, Arthur signing, Tall Tale Books, I believe that is Druid Hill area. Um, I will be in Atlanta, oh, August 28th, 29th again. I'm getting ahead of myself in Hatfield, Georgia. Um, and then I'll be in Miami in September. I'm not sure the, the, the dates. I'm waiting to hear back from the bookstore. And then I'm signing at SCAD in October. So we have, and then the, the list, it goes on and on. I'll be back in Maryland and then I'll be uh in, in Palm Springs, uh, California, for those who do know Palm Springs, because you got Palm Beach and then Palm Springs. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm on a tour and I'm kind of doing the events where I can go out outdoors. And because we don't know what is going on uh, in a lot of bookstores, I'm not saying they're a little, um, I won't say they're skeptical, but you, it's hard to put out a bunch of fires and then turn it down. And 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 people, if they're, it's their store, it's fine with me because I do so much, but most of the stores know me and they say yes to me. I don't care if I'm in or outside, it doesn't matter. Actually, I prefer to be outside because I love being outdoors. However, it can be a little sticky in the South. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Kibway Trim has joined us. So welcome to the Hammer Way Show, hello. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. What are you drinking? I am drinking an iced caramel macchiato, medium, with two extra shots of espresso. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, it looks so good. It looks so good. <laughs> well, thank you for taking time out. We'll, we'll get right to it. So, of course. 
I want to know, okay, because um, you, okay, so I have spoke about you as being a entrepreneur. You are to me, one of the top entrepreneurs that I know. There's, there's so much to uh, your portfolio. So I had to kind of like pick and choose what to pull out to kind of highlight because there's a lot, but I did want to discuss. You did want to discuss what? You're, you are, where are you from? I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, the beautiful Twin Island Republic. Okay, wonderful. Did you, they, I'm like, okay, so you're from Trinidad. Okay, so yes. a very, a very strong community. Um, very, I'm sure you're very proud that you're from Trinidad. Oh, without a doubt, man. Um, how could you not? I would hope that everybody would be proud of where they're from, but I mean, you know, island people are some of the happiest, most resilient, most hardworking. Affable people on earth. Well, so I'm and that, definitely proud to be Trinidadian. Okay, and that's what I was going to say. You are you 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 are from a island that's very resilient, and they they think they're all that because they are all that. <laughs> they are we, all. We that. don't think we're all that. We know we're all that. Oh, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> I was hoping for that one. Okay, Ooh, there, it there it is. Okay, so um. Let's talk about your basketball career. Okay, so who is Kid Way Trim to the audience? For those who may not know you, I know a lot of people in Los Angeles worldwide know you, but uh, you had a you have a you had a basketball career. Could you just give us a quick synopsis on how that began? Um, yeah, you know, I I came to the US when I was 17. I got a basketball scholarship to go to Sacred Heart University in Connecticut, which is a private Catholic Division I school in the Northeast Conference. Um, I did five years there and you know, by the end of my five years, I was a first-team academic, All-American, first-team All-Conference player, leading scorer in the league. After that, I had a short stint with the Clippers, summer league and mini camp. Then uh, I went overseas. I played uh, 10 years in eight different countries. Uh, I won my only professional championship in Japan. Um, I actually have my ring with me. I can show it to you. I'd love to see it. I had to get a little closer to the camera, but. Oh, nice. I see the diamonds. All right, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I won that in Japan um, and I retired in uh, 2016. So that was my basketball career in a nutshell. Okay, okay. So um, you, I want to talk about uh, Kibwe. You, you had this great basketball career and you're still in excellent shape, but you know, we saw that Mr. Uh, Bill Russell uh, passed away. Do you have any words you want to share with us? Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. You know, Bill Russell was a legend, uh, one of the greatest winners ever in any sport. Uh, he won 11 championships. Uh, he played in an era where it was very difficult for colored people. Uh, he broke a lot of barriers in that regard. He was also uh, very adamant in um, taking a stand for people of color within the sport. Um, so his uh, mark was left on the court and off the court as well. Salute to a legend. May he rest in peace. And, uh, you know, condolences to his family. Yes, yes. Uh, and yes, may, may Mr. Bill Russell uh, rest in peace. Thank you for saying that. Uh, do you have any friends in the league? Um, do you have any? Did yeah, I mean, I have numerous friends, man. It's a small circle. I'm not going to say names, but I do have a lot of friends who are former and still active NBA players. Okay, okay. I was hoping you'd drop a name or two. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, who, okay, so let me just say this. Do you have a favorite? Um, uh, okay, are, if you're, I know you're a fan of basketball as well, but most pro basketball players have a favorite basketball player. Do you have a, one? Uh, I have a favorite basketball player. Other than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? I'm a fan of great basketball, man. There's so many great players. I mean, I... I love LeBron, I love Kevin Durant, I love Steph, I love Clay, I love, man, I mean, there's a lot, man. I, I can go on and on and on. Okay, well, my favorite is, of course, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay. And, and I did like Dr. J, Julius Irvin. I, I, I still do. Those are good basketball players to like. And um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar actually has Trinidadian heritage. Yeah? Yeah, he has Trinidadian in his family tree. Very cool, very cool. I mean, are you surprised? Like, come on. Well, yeah, I, I did. I hadn't really. I've done a lot of research 
through the years on a lot of people, but I'm glad you dropped that nugget because I, I know now I understand the, the connection because he's a very godly man. And most of the yeah. time when you're, you know what I mean, when you're connected to our people, it's a natural thing to have that God, you know, sure. okay, that sure. Holy Spirit woven in between us. So you have a foundation. And this is what I like to talk about the entrepreneur side of you. Uh, how did you get your foundation? Who, who, what is the name of it? And what do um, you do? So, so the name of my foundation is uh, the Dream Chaser International Foundation. Um, it's obviously a 501c3 nonprofit. It is registered here in Los Angeles as well as in the Caribbean. Um, I launched it in 2013. And basically, you know, starting off, we provided tutoring, mentoring, and financial aid for young people that were doing well academically and in, and in some sort of discipline, no matter what it was. I mean, it was basically, we basically just wanted to, um, you know, kind of encourage kids along the way, because I know if it weren't for a few people that encouraged me in my life, my life could have taken a completely different path. So you never know, um, one push in any direction could send some, someone along very different roads. So, you know, over the years, we've done a lot of, you know, shoe drives, toy drives, read allows, basketball camps, anything innovative that we can do to just try to keep kids and young people engaged. Um, we've also kind of, uh, more nowadays, we've also went into the realm of kind of helping like troubled teens, unhoused teens, and teens suffering with addiction, things of the sort. Um, but mainly, you know, when we, when I found the Dream Chaser, it was to kind of reach out to young people just to help steer them in the right direction. Okay, so if if we wanted to donate to, is we donate to DC Foundation or Dream Chaser? So you can go to dcifoundation.org. That's dcifoundation.org, and everywhere on the page you will be able to donate if you so choose. Okay, thank you so much because we'll we'll make sure we put that up. Um, DC found DCI foundation dot org. Okay. Yep. So um so you are the talk of the town because in Los Angeles you have the party that is the place to be if you are going to be anywhere on the weekend. Please do tell. Oh man, is that what you heard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, well, you know, I, I also uh, founded a company, LA Lime. Uh, most people ask, what does that mean, LA Lime? Um, where I'm from in Trinidad, Lime means hang out or get together. So if you say, let's go live, that means let's go hang out. So when I started LA Lime, it was basically to bring good people together to network have good vibes, have good energy, and possibly do business. Uh, we still do a lot of that, but it's also turned into a lot of fun parties. Um, and right now, for the summer, we do what is called the H2O Pool Party at the Honda's Hotel. And um, it's been very well received. Uh, so we're having a lot of fun. Um, the next one is on August 21st. It's a day party from you know 2 to 7 p.m. So you, you know, do a little bit of day drinking, a little bit of day dancing, you know, just come out, have some fun, good vibes, good energy, good people. Yeah, absolutely. So it, can we say we're actually liming? Is there a word called like we're liming if we're at your event? Are we liming? Yeah, yeah we're liming. That's okay. what we do. Okay. Exactly. That's perfectly correct. Yep. We're well, liming. I think, I think the reason it's so packed. Okay. You remember the song by Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Uh, Will, what, what, what was his band? What was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when Will Smith was a he still is a rapper, but when he rapped, anyway, he did the song Summertime. That, you know, Summertime back in the day, we would, you know, with sitting on Lorenzo back in the park, you know what I'm talking about? He's driving around right. in Philly. So right. we had a, okay, so I think the reason why it's so packed, because people either had that experience coming up, or they had some experience where you could gather, where all of us would gather together and hang out on a beach, or hang out in a car spot, because we had Haynes Point in D.C., up by Georgetown, there was this huge park, and everybody would have the baddest car. You shine your car up, you pile in right. there, right? <laughs> and then you just right. drive. You just, you're going to be seen. But it was something yeah. to do, and it was cool. It was fun. It was good. Right. To, you know, and I see everybody knows to look fresh at your <laughs> events. You know, <laughs> I mean. You know what? You know, look good, feel good, live well. You know, yeah. that's the mantra. Yeah. So you can't come there looking 
you know, you gotta. <laughs> no flip flops. No, no floppity flop and the bitch child just wraps around. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, you know, it's a pool party, but you know, it's still LA. You know, people are fashionable, people yeah. are trendy, um, people are creative. So, you know, that's what you're going to expect. It's true. And it looks like a really good time. I, I can't wait to come out and, and join you guys because it looks like a really good, no, it doesn't look like it is. I already know it is. I've, <laughs> I've, I've, you know, every time that we, me and my friends talk about it, like, oh my God, did you see the, did you see the videos? Did you see the videos? It's really cool. And it's nice that, to do that because there's not a lot of people doing that. And that's the true vibe of Los Angeles. You have captured the true Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's I, I feel like it's just um, if you're in a place, um, you want to help that place be better. You want to be part of the fabric. You want to leave your imprint on it. And that's just me. I'm a people person. I'm an energy guy. and I love to be around good people. I get energy from good people. So that's what we do, man. Let's let's bring it all together and see what magic we can make. <laughs> well, can we can we talk about LA gear? Or is it too soon to talk about it? Can we talk about LA gear? We can talk about LA gear. Okay, yeah. so LA Gear has come out. Have they come out to your event? Or, I mean, yeah, you know what? Um, it's funny because I just had a meeting uh, with uh, my LA Gear team yesterday. And I'm still trying to get them to come out to the pool party, but you know, there's so much going on because they're in the midst of a rebranding. Yeah. Uh, if you recall, LA Gear was super hot back in the day. Um, you know, it, it was hot when I couldn't afford it. And, um, you know, I, I met uh, the owner a few years back to a mutual friend of mine, Jay, um, such an awesome guy, amazing guy. And how the relationship started was uh, Jay was just so adamant in being a supporter of myself and my foundation. So he donated a lot of shoes to, to my foundation and we were able to touch a lot of people locally and internationally. Um, and, you know, fast forward to now, um, I'm fully on board with LA, LA Gear, um, you know, one of the team members, um, and we just um, continue to try to make great things happen. Nice. I love LA gear, and I love the fact that the, when the shoes glow. I mean, I tried to get the yellow glow shoes, but they were sold out. So, mm. you know, but my husband and I, we were, we're very pleased. I love LA gear because it's, it's, it's a leather shoe. They're comfortable. They fit. Let me tell you what I like about them is that the, the, the girl size is actually, I like the fact that the men's or the men's look like a man's shoe. The girl looks like a. Right. right. Okay. There's something for everybody. Yes. You know, um, I, and listen, there's, there's some new stuff coming out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a proud partner. I'm LA Gear sponsored. <laughs> you know, you can use my code. You'll get a nice discount. You know, so, um, yeah, it's, okay. um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's just, it's a good collaboration. And I like the collaboration more because of what the company stands for. Uh, they do a lot of philanthropic work. Uh, they are very big in community and giving back. And I, I just love that. I like to align myself with people who have kind of the same vision as I have when it comes to community and giving back and being people forward. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're a very, you're a very smart guy. Not everybody gets it and you have latched on and ran with it. So I want to, I want to also include um, your book. You have wrote oh, yeah. this wonderful book. <laughs> you know what? I, I usually mean, have, I usually have it with me. Somehow I don't have it. It's right okay. Now. I don't know. But yeah, um, the book is called From Nerd to Pro. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm trying to stay still, but I'm always so expressive. I'm trying to see if I have it on my bookshelf because I know I have your book. I might have it, but if I move, but we'll, I, I will put it up at the end of the show. I do have it. I know I, I have it. I'm looking at it. I can see it from here, from nerd to pro. Okay. Right, yeah. So, I mean, it, it basically talks about me going from a, a more academically inclined kid to a championship winning professional athlete. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I do a lot of speaking. At one point, I was contracted with the L.A. school district, and I would go around to different schools and speak to the kids. And then I also do corporate speaking because, you know, every corporation wants their employees to have an athlete's mindset. So, you know, the book was just kind of a way for me to kind of get in touch with people. And it's an easy read, 100 pages. Mm -hmm. Just kind of give my story and, you know, let people know, especially young people, that if you're disciplined, determined, and dedicated in anything, you can do whatever you want to do. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I just think it's awesome when I first met you. I met you at a red carpet event. And when you told me you were a writer, you were very casual. They like, well, I also have a book. I'm like, oh my God, what else do you do? 
you know, but I think, but that's awesome because that's, that's, that's how we roll though. That's how the Brown can do, we can do it all. And, and I think that given the opportunity, you, you just know how to kick the door open. Once you get that opportunity, it seems like you just know how to make it work. And, and where does that, where does that drive and spirit come from? You know what, man? I just think it, it, it just comes from, I think, a solid foundation where you kind of, you know, you kind of just make the best of any opportunity that's in front of you. You know nothing is going to be given. You know you have to earn it. You know you have to work hard, but you just kind of stay open to possibilities. And that's how I've kind of lived my life. Um, stay open. And when, I mean, possibilities arise, you got to be ready to just grab it. Um, you, you have to kind of be fearless. You can't yeah. be afraid because this society and the world is going to make you afraid of a lot of things. Mm. Um, so, you know, you want to just grab things by the horn and, and, you know, you just try something. It may work, it may not work, but what are you going to gain by not trying? Right. Those I wanted are, to ask that's you. How I look at things. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a good outlook. Thank you for that. I want to know how long did you play ball overseas? Do you recall how long is that well, journey? 10 years. Ten years. Wow. Ten years. Did you get yeah. to? Did you come back to the states, or do you just? Did you just stay out over? No, no, no. So, I, you know, I, I'm I'm playing. I'm overseas for uh, eight nine months, and then I'm back home for three months. Oh, so okay. So the summertime, the summertime is basically the off season. Come back for three months, and you know, it's funny because you're supposed to be on vacation, but you're sometimes working even harder to prepare yourself. For the upcoming season. Exactly. So, yeah, so I was gone nine months back, three months. Okay, and so most of the ball players that I know, because like Shaq just lost 50 pounds from his uh pandemic weight, as he says. And it's like, damn, he can lose 50 pounds and he's young, he's still young, but for him to have lost 50 pounds, he was diligent about it. And my brother uh played pro ball. You and he's in shape, he's got a six pack. How do you guys stay in shape forever? <laughs> well, if you want to ask me, during the week I only eat broccoli and chicken breasts. If you want the truth, <laughs> oh, that's, okay. It's, it's actually very difficult, man. Again, it takes a lot of discipline, you know, because when you're actively playing, you work out so much that you can eat whatever you want. Like I never had to think about it. I ate whatever I wanted because I was burning so much working out right. that it was fine. But now that I'm not working out that much, I really have to be diligent with my diet and my exercise. I wake up at six o'clock every morning to do cardio every single day, six o'clock, wow. <laughs> right? Wow. And like I said, during the week, I literally eat chicken breast and broccoli. Wow, on chicken the weekends, breast. On the weekends, I splurge a little bit, have, have some fun with my family, we go out, we eat. But I mean, it takes a lot of discipline and Different things work for different people. That's just how I, it's working for me right now. Somebody else might have different regimens and different nutrition, you know, things that they do. And that's how I try to stay in shape. But I could probably still lose a good 10 pounds. Okay. I, I think psychologically, though, you have to have that mindset. Once you're in and you're on that side of the street, you're kind of there. That's where you that's where you live. And that's your that's your sweet spot. For people who are in shape, they have that sweet spot that that's how they live. Right. The, the heavies live over here, and the, and, <laughs> know, and the people who are disciplined live here, and it's natural. Right. You know? Yeah. It just it, <laughs> listen, it takes hard work and it takes discipline. It is not easy. Yeah. And I'm not gonna sit up here and pretend like it's easy. But yeah. some days. I just want to eat a god dang burger. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get you know? it. <laughs> I do. I get it. So you mentioned your lovely family. So we have to say that Kibway is off the market. <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. do you want to you want to say that you're you know you are happy family man? Because I, I I think it's always great to mention your family. If your choice is oh, privacy. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 definitely. I mean, my, my wife is way more amazing than I am. Um, you know, you know, Johnson, Penny Will. Yes. Shout out to her if she ever sees this. Um, I mean, she's, she's great in her own right. You know, she was a former American Next Top model. Beautiful. Um, we have a, yeah, we have a beautiful family together. Um, we got married about three years ago. Our wedding was actually broadcasted on Lifetime. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, yes, you I do. That. Yes, I do. Right? I saw it. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, we are, um, we are just, we're, I mean, we, we're good. Uh, we're, like I said, 
We're about three years into marriage. Um, she's amazing. Uh, two beautiful kids. I, I thank God every day for them. Mm. And I'm just, you know, trying to do the best I can. Yeah. Wonder, that's wonderful. You're you're you are an amazing person. I'm sure you're I'm sure you're an amazing husband. I know that you're an amazing dad, but I think all around you you you're blessed. And that's why I wanted to talk to you because we we have we have a lot of positive role models. We just do, but you know, there's there's so much to we're, we're doing our lives, but I like to um put like history, make history by talking to our African men. Because they, they are our kings. I said that at the beginning of the show. They are our kings. They are our leaders. And I like hearing from you because I'm grateful my dad is still here. But he taught me everything. And he is an epitome of a man. And so are you. And I think we need to hear from people like you. Well, you know what? I, I'm thankful. Those are very kind words. And, you know, I, I always embrace the opportunity, the opportunity to share my experience and my perspective. I am an imperfect man, I'm by no means perfect, um, but I just, you know, try my best to do the best I can. A absolutely. So with, with that said, we are going to, we are going to bid you adieu. <laughs> did, I say that right? did, I, bid adieu. Uh, did I say it right? That's French, yeah, that's correct. You know what the hell I'm saying? Look, it's been so, I'm in the South right now. It is so damn hot. You go outside and your brain is just fried. I, you're like, what am I doing? Oh, I'm going to my car. It's, it's just it is horrible. hot out here, man. Yeah, it's, it's hot. It's <laughs> but anyway, it was good talking to you. Thank you for coming on the Hammer Away Show. Uh, would you like to plug some of your um, social media? Sure, sure, sure. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm, I'm on Instagram, KTRIM54. That's KTRIM54. Um, LA Live, my event company, is on Instagram as well. And um, nonprofit is on Instagram as well. DCI Foundation, D C I S O U N D A T I O N. Uh, so yeah, you can reach me on all those social media platforms. Um, you know, I'm I'm an open book. I'm reachable. I'm not like a <laughs> a, a ghost that you can't touch. Um, so around, man, and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next pool party. So the HCO pool party is August. August 21 at the Honda's Hotel in Hollywood, uh, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., man. Come on down, man. Wear your flyest swimsuit, and let's get it cracking. I might throw you in the pool if I see you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you take care of yourself. It was good to see you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.